and welcome to Upon Further Review. I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to in this week's show. We'll take you out for highlights of a rare Hanner Fieldhouse Georgia Southern doubleheader. The women uh, winning their game, the early game, and then the guys unfortunately uh, lost in the nightcap. We'll have highlights of both of those games for you. We'll also send you out as our area high school basketball teams wrapped up the regular season. The Portal Panthers giving Effingham County a scare on Saturday and then coming through with a big win uh, on Wednesday in their regular season finale at home against McIntosh County Academy. The girls unfortunately lost the game, uh, the earlier game. As for the Statesboro Blue Devils, they split with Brunswick on Tuesday. A couple big games as the girls fell to the number three seed and will be hosting the opening round of the region tournament on Thursday against South Effingham. As for the guys, they won the uh, regular season region. They're the number one seed and they will be uh, hosting the region tournament, which will begin next Tuesday for the guys and they'll be awaiting their opponent, but they will play Tuesday at 7.30. So plenty to get to. We also had some signings, a couple over at Southeast Bullock, uh, three player at, uh, high school student athletes signing scholarships over there. J.R. Robb with the Citadel. You had Enosh McMillan with GMC and Christian Clark, quarterback for Southeast Bullock, will be heading to Savannah State. We also had Ansley Woods over at uh, Portal signing a scholarship with Penn State Beaver for softball. We'll have all that and plenty more coming up on Upon Further Review. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, Please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. You choose the combination, and they'll cook in their 500-degree brick oven in just a few minutes. Your own delicious pizza experience using only the freshest ingredients on hand-tossed dough and individually sized just for you. And that Eagle Nation is why they're called Your Pie, because it's all about you. The Your Pie in Statesboro and downtown Savannah is owned and operated by Joe Hunt, a Georgia Southern grad. So when you order your next pizza, be true blue and make it all about you. Go see Joe at Your Pie, and I guarantee it, you'll be glad you did. McCook's Pharmacy, located on Highway 80 East, is family owned and operated by Lynn and Janie McCook, as well as their son, Josh McCook. Serving the Bullock County area since 2005, McCook's Pharmacy offers fast and friendly service where the customers come first. Vaccinations are available, including shingles, flu, pneumonia, and Tdap. Drive through service is available with two drive through windows for your convenience. McCook's Pharmacy offers free local deliveries and new customers are always welcome. Continuing the tradition of our family, caring for your family, McCook's Pharmacy, Highway 80 East. Well, the Georgia Southern men and women both in action in a rare doubleheader at Hanner Fieldhouse. The Lady Eagles able to pull off the victory. The guys not as fortunate. They had their three-game win streak snapped. Let's send you out for some highlights. The first of two at Hanner Fieldhouse, the Georgia Southern women hoping to rock on Saturday as they host Georgia State. Early on, Janiah Love Hill hits the baseline jumper. Next, Taryn Ward, the nice spin move and the foul. Then a good save and an impressive reverse by Taya Gibson. More from Ward as she backs down the defender and then hits the bank shot. The Eagles would then go inside to Lydia Freeman. He get, who gets this one to fall. Then Love Hill later on the break. Spinning and hitting for two. Cutting the Panther lead to seven at the half. In the second half, the Eagles go on a run. Simone James, the hoop and the foul. And then spotting up for three is Deja Holmes. The comeback continues. Ward, the hoop, and the foul. She'd finish with a game-high 22 points along with 10 rebounds. Back to Ward. The off-balance shot in the lane ties the game at 35. The Panthers come back to retake the lead on the layup by Taya Lyons, but the Eagles able to pull away. First, it's Ward stepping back, knocking down the three. Later, off the steal, Love Hill cruises in for the layup. She'd finished the night with 17 points. 
And going back inside, Maya banks for two. And finally, the nice spin move by Maya Burns. And the Eagles go on for the win, 71 to 61. Moving over to the guys game, the Eagles hoping for the sweep. Georgia Southern hosting Troy. We pick things up in the first half and a nice look inside to Zay Williams with the dunk. The Eagles try and come back. Trey Cobbs hits the three-pointer. Next, it's Caden Archie driving in for the layup. Then we go to Elijah McCadden. He hits the floater, gets the friendly bounce. The Trojans respond, taking an eight-point lead on the layup by Desmond Williams. Again, the Eagles try and come back. The three-pointer by Cam Bryant. But again, the Trojans with the answer. Effie Adegi, two of his 12. The Eagles try and stay close. Getty Yusuf Hiatus with the reverse. And then a floater by McCadden. But the Trojans too much as they go on to win this one by a final count of 61 to 52. Appropriately enough, Scotland type of weather for the opening round of the Georgia Southern Sharky Invitational. Wet and cold at the Georgia Southern Golf Course, but here Luke Dasher drains the birdie putt on nine. Over to ten we go, and a nice day for Eagle freshman Brantley Baker. The nice approach here. He gets that within about 20 feet. He ends up just shy with the birdie putt. But he'd finish the day in fourth place at four over. A tough field on hand, seeing Clemson's Colby Patton with the par putt. He's tied for sixth individual. Tennessee's Cade Russell with a nice touch on the birdie here, leading the way for the Volunteers. But the man on the day was Eagles senior Mason Williams here the eagle putt on number nine, which he just misses. He'd tap in for birdie. Then we move over to number 10. Williams over the green. But a nice chip shot here. Nestles up close. And then we move over to the par 5 10th hole. And Williams for birdie. He drains it. He'd finish day one in first place with a two-shot lead. Final round of the Sharky Individual Intercollegiate at the Georgia Southern Golf Course. Some nice shots in Monday's final round. Clemson's Drayton Stewart with the chip on 18. Nearly holds it. He'd go on to par over to the par 5 15th in Virginia's Jason Leisure with the birdie. He'd finish tied for third overall. Clemson's Colby Patton with a strong tournament here on the par 3 16th. The nice tee shot to within a few feet. He'd place second after a 69 Monday back to 15. And the eagle for Virginia's Chris Fosdick. He'd tie for fifth place. As for the host team, the Eagles with some nice shots here. It's Luke Dasher, the approach on the par five first. He'd step up and make the birdie. Eagle freshman Brantley Baker able to drain the long par putt on 16. He'd tie for seventh along with teammate Jack Bolcha. But everyone was chasing Georgia Southern senior Mason Williams. He'd have a one-shot lead coming in. Williams would fire a five under on the front nine and cruise from there. His second shot coming up right here on the par five 15th. He puts it to about eight feet away. He'd have that left for Eagle. He just misses the eagle putt, would tap in for a birdie. Then on 18, he'd finish things off in style. From about 30 feet away, a winding downhill putt. He holds it for a 66. 
and would grab the low medalist honors. I feel awesome. It's been a, been a fun weekend just talking to my parents. They couldn't make it this, this week, but I just cried talking to my mom. I miss them so much, and they've been through a lot with me, and I just really appreciate them. It was definitely a sharky weather yesterday. It was cold and rainy and windy, and we were all thinking about him. We really appreciate him you know, putting his name here and, and the family for doing all they've done. And it's just been, I mean, what a week. Yesterday was really tough. Today was not quite as bad, but still tough conditions and just a really fun couple of days. Uh, that putt on 18 was <laughs> carrying a little bit of steam, so glad that one hit the hole and went in. Uh, but it was a fun, fun day. Uh, both of the rounds yesterday were very good, 73 was strong in the in the cold breezy morning and then 72 in the rain um, was extremely good and um, came out this afternoon with a or this morning with a two shot lead and shot 66 was extremely impressive one of the best rounds I've, I've seen in a long time so he's got a lot to be proud of it's very proud for him special week for our team program to be able to compete in a tournament named after Thomas um, is always an honor for us um, the weather is you know it's perfect it's like he placed it on us himself uh, for us to be able to grind and compete is something that he would encourage all of us to do. Um, so proud to be playing in this tournament. But, uh, you know, the weather, it was tough, but I think that brings an opportunity to fight through some adversity. And if you can play in this, you can play in anything. So I'm glad we got the experience this week. We'll be right back with some area high school signings as well as some basketball action. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998. Providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy, in-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests, and ultrasounds, and in-house labs. Featuring nurse practitioner Melissa Beasley, Family Internal Medicine of Statesboro can accommodate same day or next day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine and Associates of Statesboro, where we care. At Thadcock Home Furniture and More, we know what it means to find the perfect fit. The feeling of surprise. That just right moment of delight. It's what we see every time a family finds their priced right style and snuggle perfect comfort. Because for us, home isn't simply where you live, it's how you live. Badcock Home Furniture and more, just right. Well, National Signing Day was last week, but we still had a couple uh, holdovers this week at Southeast Bullock. J.R. Robb, offense and defensive lineman, signing with the Citadel. You had Enosh McMillan, a defensive back and receiver, signing with GMC. And quarterback Christian Clark is off to Savannah State. We had a chance to talk to them about their decisions. Uh, today is one of like one only chance you get of a lifetime. Uh, Savannah State really is a culture that I'm looking for, has a tradition, and I feel like I can win and go play there. The coach Demasi should definitely get the job. I love what he's doing. We just got 30 new recruits on signing day. So I feel like you should be the head coach. Uh, we all have a big group chance. All we talk about is working hard together so we can get to the national championship. So I feel like we're going to have a great year. A little, a little excited and I'm nervous at the same time. You know, It's just a chance to, I guess, improve or um, like a next step in life. It just reminded me of Southeast Bullet, really. It just felt like home. I'm looking to play a couple of years and go to any school that's better or like a next level or something. Feel pretty good about it. I uh, was super excited uh, when I got invited up there to take a visit. Um, went up there, took a campus tour early December, and loved everything about the place. Um, it's a super cool place. Um, good college town, good college community, and a lot of opportunity for after college experience. Uh, men and my family have always uh, joined the service. I'm um, supposed to earn your place, and that's how you do it. You join the service. And uh, going to the Citadel will put me in a place where I need to be. I can come out of there with rank as an officer and um, commission in the armed services um, after graduation and pursue my military career there. Meanwhile, over at Portal, the softball team had a great season and Ansley Wood, one of the softball players, is off to Penn State Beaver to play next season. I feel very excited about signing. I was scared at first because like obviously it's like 10 hours away. So I was scared about leaving my family. So I kind of put it off hold for a little bit. And then like the more I looked into the school and after I visited the school, I realized like that's like home away from home. Like it, I just knew as soon as I got there, the feeling that I had, I knew it was, I knew it was, that was the right school. 
and my mom even felt like that and that's when I really knew like that's that was home so I'm really excited about signing it was great I love the coaches and everything I met some of the girls while I was up there they were really sweet the way I found them is that I had this recruiting profile and it had my email and like stuff about that on there and I had this email from Penn State Beaver and it was like hey we're interested in you being a part of our softball program I was like hmm that's it's kind of cool. So I got in touch with the coaches. We talked about like what their season is, who they play, how far away and stuff. And like I, my main concern was what does it feel like being there? And he was like, we're all just a big family. We have people from all over, like the state, the country, out of the country. And I was like, I really like that because I'll be really far away. So that's really what happened. I saw that email and then we're here now. I'm signing for them. Went to visit and everything else. So it was a blessing in disguise, really. So congratulations to all those athletes. As for our area high school basketball, I have plenty of that going on. The Portal Panthers with a couple of games. Statesboro with a big game on Tuesday. Let's send you out for some highlights. Statesboro High hosting top-seeded Brunswick in their regular season finale. We pick up the action in the first half, and Tarika Gibson gets the friendly bounce. Next, Madison Lee with the turnaround jumper. But the Pirates responding from long distance. The three-pointer from Dariana Johnson, and then it's Shikardia Cowart for three. The Blue Devils try and stay close. Alyssa Staten. Coming through with the rebound and the putback. And then it's Ashari Washington getting free inside for two. The Pirates right back again as Cowart hits in transition. And they would take a 10-point halftime lead in the second half. Rhea Johnson gets this one to fall. And then Malaya Deacle, the hoop and the foul. But the Pirates proving to be too much. Jemiah Flowers with 18 points, and they'd win 51 to 41. To the boys' game we go. Statesboro trying to earn the number one seed, and things look pretty good early on. Leslie Black, the hoop and the foul. Next, Tim Taylor fighting for the putback. And then Raylan Grant driving in for the layup. The Pirates trying to stay within striking distances. Sage Austin hits the three pointer. But the Blue Devils in control. Ja'Cory Hill pulls up and knocks down the three-pointer. Next, it's Raylan Grant from the corner for three himself. And then the Blue Devils having plenty of success in the paint. Leslie Black would finish with 18 points and 14 rebounds. Next, it's Willie Ballard pulling up for two. And then Ballard with the three-pointer from the corner. Statesboro up by eight. They'd extend their lead. Cam Michael driving and hitting the layup. And then Grant drives in and gets the bounce here. The Blue Devils take a 31-21 halftime lead, second half. And it's a three-pointer from Albert Michael. And then Michael to Hill for three more. Statesboro up by 16 as Black goes in for two here. Black controlling the post. The nice hop step move. And then it's a rebound and the lefty put back. Cam Michael next spinning. And he gets the another good friendly bounce. Michael then pulls up. From the baseline, and finally it's Albert to Ja'Cory Hill, and Statesboro wins 60-50. to The regular season finale for the Portal Panthers is they were hosting McIntosh Wednesday night. Ladies first, and it's Kenya Evans hitting the three-pointer. Portal tries to come back behind the play of Shanisha Coleman as she gets this one to fall. Later, Coleman driving in and hitting the off-balance layup. Portal would hang around for a while in this one, but the Buccaneers pull away. 
Jerrica Bryant alone for the layup, and then back to Evans for three more as Portal falls 53-30. to We move over to the boys game, and Portal in control throughout this one. Amir Jackson pulls up and knocks down the 12-footer. And then it's Elijah Coleman. The long baseline two. Then Jackson on the break. Joseph Thomas pulling up and hitting the baseline jumper. And then Thomas pulls up and hits the long three. More from outside as Coleman hits for three more. And then Coleman, the acrobatic left-handed finish. Portal up by nine at the half. And then they'd start to pull away in the second half. Jackson, he'd finish with 21 points and 14 rebounds. Here Jackson tracking down his own missed shot and hits. Next, Joseph Thomas pulls up. He finished with 12 points in the game. Coleman in transition. Thought about the dunk. Instead, the layup, he'd have 18. Later, Jay Odom with the layup. And then time for some showtime. Coleman getting up for his first high school dunk in a game. But not being selfish, he'll spot Amir Jackson moments later in transition. The big guy throws it down with authority. The crowd off their feet again. Then the finishing touch. How about Thomas? Maybe not a dunk, but a nice pull-up three. Portal goes on a 12 to nothing run. Jackson then with the exclamation point, dunking this one inside, and Portal wins 69 to 47. Thursday night, Statesboro hosting the opening round of the region tournament. The Blue Devils against South Effingham and Statesboro in command. Alyssa Staten on the break off the glass for two. And then it's Tarika Gibson spotting up and knocking down the three-pointer. Statesboro going on a run as Gibson just inside the stripe hits for two more. And then it's Malaya Dekel. She'll kick it back outside. Rhea Johnson for three. The Blue Devils staying hot from outside. Kaylee Wedlow for three. Statesboro up 35-15 to 15 at the half. More of the same in the second half. Gibson for three more. And then Alyssa Staten with the rebound and the putback. And finally, it's Madison Lee, the hoop and the foul. As Statesboro advances, winning 55-39. to 39. That'll wrap things up for now. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.